back, ladies and gentlemen, to Division 2 of the Midwest F1 League. I'm Hotspot, and alongside me uh, for the foreseeable future, fortunately, unfortunately, is the, monk is the Monkey Mafia, as uh, he's kind of out on injury. He should be racing today, but unfortunately, he's uh, have to join me up in this booth because uh, he cannot race, which sucks, but... Uh, you know, that's about how it goes. But anyways, uh, welcome to the first round of the season here at the uh, here for the Canadian Grand Prix, the home Grand Prix of the Midwest F1 League here at the Circuit de Gilles Villeneuve. 14 corners make up this four and a half kilometer circuit with six to the left and eight to the right. Three DRS zones here, but the uh, task at hand is staying penalty, penalty free through the three chicanes, that being obviously eight and nine, 13, 14, and then uh, finally three and four. Wow, I did that in completely the wrong order. Um, but Down backward. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I was just looking at the picture. We kind of did that completely wrong. But yeah, so Monkey's here with me uh, for the foreseeable future uh, due to an injury. But you know, it's obviously a pleasure to have him in the booth, and uh, you know, hopefully we are hopefully we're in for a good one today. I want to give a special shout out to the one, two, three, four, five, six drivers that I know of that are going to be joining us in our uh, little broadcast radio experiment thing, and that is Tioch, Adeltonian Detail, Ray46, and Matt Rosie. So thank you all to those boys for uh, allowing me to have fun with this, and it looks like the first person out on track is going to be the Williams of Sephron, I believe, which actually doesn't surprise Matt. me too much, usually. Matt Rosie, uh, actually. Matt Rosie. Nope. Looking to uh, come back strong after whatever happened to Abu Dhabi, which caused him to uh, leave the race midway. I believe his power went out, actually, which is unfortunate because he was leading that race at the time. So hopefully he puts in a uh, good one here. Yeah, I think he's definitely a championship contender this year. He'll be uh, he'll be running up front battling, I think, almost every race. Uh, today, though, it's going to be a war of attrition. Who's going to have the least amount of penalties? Absolutely, and that's kind of how the case was last time we came here. It was, uh, you know, we did see some good racing, but something to also remember, there is definitely always the threat of rain here uh, at the Canadian Grand Prix. We've seen it before. I believe we actually saw this last time uh, we came to this circuit. Uh, the Canadian Grand Prix, unfortunately, not on the F1 schedule this year, which is uh, kind of unfortunate for me because I live decently close to it. But, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to see it back in 2022. Uh, definitely one of the exciting circuits on the schedule. Definitely. And so here we are. We're going to go along with Matt Rosie for a lap of the circuit. This is pretty much your impromptu track guy. Turns one and two. You want to get a good entry into the corner. As we saw, he had a bit of a lock up there. And then again into two, which actually didn't hurt him because he kept a somewhat decent line through one and two, but it definitely wasn't as fast as he would like it to be. Three and four you can take up a lot more curb on the inside than he actually did. Uh, did good to stay penalty free. That's one of the tougher places to do so. And then here's six and seven, a good line into six, and then cross over to the other side of the track through seven. You'll get a good run into the DRS section. Uh, one of the bigger, better uh, overtaking opportunities of this circuit. And then down the straight into eight and nine, another one of those uh, places where you can invalidate your lap times as we've seen Matt Rosie just do so unfortunate for him we've got a lot of drivers out on track at the moment this hairpin of turn 10 very tough to handle if you don't get the line correctly you can lose a lot of time there then once again down the final drs straight out of turns 11 and 12 pretty much straightforward here and then as we go into turn 13 and 14 you can take 14 pretty tight in as we're going to see him do here uh, you really need to make sure you get a good run coming out of 14 because you can not only invalidate your lap you can also lose a lot of time there and that is your track guide for the circuit to Gilles Villeneuve I'm going to jump down with Forza Juve as he's going to put in our first lap 108.9 not a bad start on the sauce got let's see four of them out there on the mediums we'll see how that turns out got Ray coming in at a 109.9 and then Uncle Ben, surprisingly though, even on mediums, I figured he'd be a little further up though, 1103 with Racing Ginger is gonna be filling in this week for Valentine and the Haas. Oh, that's what I forgot to say. 
<laughs> Thank you for reminding me that. Uh, so yeah, uh, Valentine uh, got moved up from Division Three last season. He will be taking that hot seat that uh, Range Racing Ginger is currently uh, taking part in tonight as uh, Valentine getting the call up to Div 1 for the first race of the season. As we see, Forza Juve uh, has the fastest lap. Tioch right there, five one thousandths of a second back. Very, very closely contested there. Um, I tell you what, Ben's Rice, despite being on the medium tires, has put in a respectable lap. He's about a second and a half off the pace. He's still in the top five, though, at the moment. He's faster than some of these guys on soft, so, uh, you know, maybe that could have been a good call. Yeah, I think it's a stretch here to do a one-stop, so I think most are probably going to be looking to two-stop it, maybe a medium soft soft for somebody who can put in a good qualifying lap on the mediums. Otherwise, you got to go soft, medium, soft, something like that. Um, I have done the one-stop medium soft, but man, you are stretching those tires. Absolutely, and this is going to be one of those things, I, I mean, that's a common trend that we've seen uh, with Div 1, or uh, Div 2, Div 1, what am I talking about? Uh, but that's one of those common trends that we've seen. We saw that at the uh, kind of experimental race we had at Austria. Some of these guys are definitely going to be willing to try out some of these off strategies. I know... Uh, uh, you were actually one for that as well. I, I remember at the realistic race that we did in Bahrain, you were one of those guys that threw on the hard tires. I mean, is that something that you are that you usually do? Is that something that you would do here? Well, I, I pretty much have to. You know, I race a lot of a lot of the leagues I race in. I am a little bit underclass. I'm a little bit slower, so I just got to focus on the alternate strategies, not getting penalties. So I'm always one you'll see out there throwing a weird strategy at it. Well, I tell you what, sometimes those weird strategies are what actually help you. And uh, while we, we just missed, Capitano has gone off into the barriers in Sector 1 and has lost the majority of his right side of his wing. Um, I'm not entirely sure how he's turned it. Um, I think he was around turn 3 and 4 as I went on board with him and I kind of just saw he was sitting in the grass. I thought he was leading, uh, letting some cars go by, but no, he's actually really smacked the wall on the inside of the corner. And we got Spoolin coming across the line here. Oh, must have been on an outlap. What am I talking about? <laughs> Uh, at least it's not the curse darn, with me as they rookie. go into the pits. <laughs> yeah. At least it's not the curse with me where you go on board with them and they immediately go into the pits as you think, oh, they're probably having a good laugh here. Uh, let's see what they got in the go in. But uh, Spool and Dub, who we have seen before, uh, Div 2 regular last season, who uh, previously drove for Ferrari. is a pretty good driver. Not, not one of the standout talents on the grid, but I tell you what, he was one of the more consistent drivers on the grid, so he's definitely also a force to be reckoned with this season, for sure. Uh, behind him in the Alpha Tauri, who, as I go on board with him, has invalidated his lap. That is Will Anz in the Alpha Tauri. Will Anz, I will say, uh, kind of came aboard midway through last season. I say midway, I'm talking the last five races or so. And I tell you what, when this man is on his game and consistent, he could be a championship contender, and we'll just have to see if that plays into fruition. All right, now it looks like Spoolin come around here to put a lap in. Coming down the front stretch here. Looks like he will put himself into P4. Not a bad spot. P4. That is a solid lap. The top five all within one second of each other. Good to see. I will say, again, we mentioned earlier the uh, drivers who are on the medium compound pretty much staying uh, within the midfield. Capitano uh, and Uncle Ben's Rice, kind of 7th and 8th right now on the medium tire. Soy Loco, who is on his outlap to start a timed lap, uh, is also on the medium compound. And then ZGS down there uh, has yet to make a time, but he has also chosen the medium tire. So that could be uh, an interesting strategy to look out for. As you know, if you're outside the top 10, you do get to uh, change up your tires at the beginning of the race or vice versa, as we've seen Soy Loco go across the curbing and uh, turn, four, uh, turn three and he's deleted his lap time. So unfortunate for him as he's tacked on yet another lap onto those tires. Yeah, I went ahead and jump on here with Detail. He's just starting his hot lap. Detail, I race with him in a few few leagues, and consistent It's the one thing about him I like. He uh, doesn't get a lot of penalties, usually keeps it fairly clean, and just always focuses on being there at the end, which is always a good, good characteristic to have. I like the idea of ending the race on fresh softs when, you're, when you've got a lot less fuel. 
And, you know, Detail was one of the drivers that we saw last season who drove for Mercedes. Uh, you know, had a couple of races where he just had no luck whatsoever, but then comes in and I believe I believe it was Zanvor and finishes third, Mercedes' best result of the season. And then, uh, obviously, Impossible Bacon, who uh, is now up in Div 1, did that again at Abu Dhabi. So, you know, there's no question about, uh, about Detail's talents. He's definitely a very solid driver. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to put on a good performance for the BWT Racing Point team, which last season did not have a very good uh, Division 2 campaign. However, they are looking to make amends for that this season, as... Uh, Ooh, good. P5 for him. P5, that's a pretty solid lap as well. Uh, I mean, not too far off the pace. It's looking like that one second mark is probably going to be about the trends. Uh, that that mark actually stretches back down to seventh now with Ray 46. And then Adeltonian is kind of uh, the cutoff, I guess, as he's a, a second and a tenth behind. Yeah, I think the one thing we saw in that exhibition race last week is this uh, field is very equal. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of qualifying this year within a second, you know, going down into the teens. Um, it's going to be a interesting season for the most part. And that is definitely true, and we saw that a lot of times last season where, you know, we would have pole decided on the last, you know, lap or two of the session, uh, you know, within the last minute even. So, I mean, I tell you what, we are definitely in for one heck of a season, uh, hopefully, this first race proves to be that way, as we say, uh, Capitano getting a little bit into the grass there as he goes uh, into 10. Uh, it doesn't look like he's had a terrible lap so far, though it doesn't look like one of the fastest he can manage. He's now put on the soft compound as uh, his best time was put on the mediums. Let's see what he can do. This is, I believe, a timed lap for him. Yes, it is. Here he is through that, 13 and 14. One, one second gap is now extended out to 9. P9. And Capitano, he goes into ninth, so now down to P10. Okay. So all of the top 10 drivers within one second of each other as we enter this last six and a half minutes of the qualifying session. I, I mean, if this isn't a sign of things to come, I do not know what is, as this is just... Oh, and ZGS has gone off in, uh, coming out of turn 14. I was able to just go along with that. He has completely toasted the front of his car out of the corner, uh, completely smacked into the inside barrier. They're very reminiscent of, I believe, uh, uh, I believe it was Kevin Magnuson did that a couple seasons ago, uh, where he's just absolutely clipped the grass and completely in the car on the left side of the track. Very unfortunate for him, as he has also put on a fresh set of soft tires. Uh, so that is definitely not what he wanted. Yeah, as, especially uh, right there. That you got to go around the whole track to get back to get that wing replaced. Just takes so much time to get back over there with that. Um, a little breaking news for you, though. I uh, breaking news. Got a weather report here. We're gonna go with a wet start to a dry finish. So the rain to start it, which is definitely is gonna make it interesting. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's going to be super interesting, as you said, because we see a lot of... This is, this is one of those tracks where, you know, some people will prefer having the lower downforce setups, which is definitely something uh, that you can use on this track. Some people will prove to go to higher uh, downforce setups. Um, you know, me personally would try to stick with the higher end of the downforce, but, you know, going into the rain, they might have just that little bit of, of an advantage um, at the start of this race. Some of those people on the lower downforce settings are going to be struggling a little bit. One of them, I believe, probably going into this turn 10 here. Um, ZGS, he, I mean, he really needs to get back to the pits right now. I mean, he has absolutely no time uh, to sit around and not make another attempt uh, <laughs> to uh, of a time lap here. Forza yeah, Juve get, still holding on to provisional pole at the moment. He'll have to go in and and get out right away to have a chance at it. So let's hope he can get in there and get one shot at it. He he has the worst luck in qualifying. I raced with him a few places, and it just seems like whether he gets a lap in or not, he just he always finds a way to spin. Qualifying is not his friend. As we see Tioch coming to the line now, currently second on the grid, and that will put him on pole by two tenths of a second. Uh, what a very solid lap that was. He was about five thousandths of a second prior to this, and he has set an absolutely ridiculously paced lap, putting two tenths of a second back on Forza Juve in second. Matt Rosie 
uh, half a second back. And so that gap of, you know, within a second now falls down to sixth. However, from there on out, it's still pretty evenly contested. Uh, a driver making his uh, outlap now in a fresh set of soft is going to be Nero Nix in that Renault. Uh, let's see what he has to offer. He currently sits 10th at about 1.2 seconds off pole. But let's see what he's able to do here. And he'll have a red ball right behind him of Noganator. Also coming out on the outlap. It looks like Uncle Ben's is coming in to the pits. Ah, I caught your curse. <laughs> Uncle Ben's, uh, yeah, another one of those drivers that have the medium tires. He's actually fit that. Uh, that is a, a fresh set of mediums for him. He currently sits 13th. Not a terrible spot to be, though. I assume in the wet race, he's going to have to make at least one more go at a time lap here very shortly. But here comes Nehru down the street. Let's see how he handles eight and nine looking pretty good so far on a decent lap maybe took eight a little bit slower than he would have liked to uh but doesn't look to be on that bad of a lap at the moment there's a great camera angle through 10. looks like nero is um, up but almost half second on his previous lap that would jump him up top five he keeps that and he looks to be on an absolutely cooking lap right now as he heads down the final DRS straight now. It all comes down to these final two corners of 13 and 14, and he's oh, handled it well. That was absolutely beautiful. Let's see where he comes out, and the answer is fifth for Nero wow. Nix. A very, very solid lap for him. It looks like Sephron just started a hot lap. Sephron back there in the Williams. Sephron was one of those drivers last season that definitely, definitely could have made a run at one of the transfer spots, but just sometimes lacked that utter consistency that you needed. Uh, there was just a couple tough races that unfortunately, you know, he got caught up in some bad luck, messed up the strategy, whatever it may be. Uh, but, you know, definitely keep on a lookout for him this season as he is uh, on a time lap yet again. Not to mention Tioch, uh, who currently sits provisional pole four, is a Juve on his outlap. Matt Rosie, who I believe is actually right behind uh, Saffron City, who we're along with right now. Saffron taking 10, a bit shallow a little bit. Probably could have taken that a little bit wider, carried more speed out of it, but not at the moment. We have a that is a Alfa Romeo that's off in sector... Oh, no, that is a racing point that's off there in sector two. That is Detail, who is in a very peculiar part of the track. Doesn't look to have any damage. I'm not sure if he was letting uh, people on timed laps go by. However, he is in a very uh, strange part of the track, to say the least. And as we're winding down here, got a couple. Looks like ZGS did get in. Uh, got another hot lap going now. Got a Mercedes coming across here. Uh, the high tower. He's starting his. 20 seconds left here. We'll see who can get one started. Well, here comes ZGS still on the. Well, he's on the. He's on the freshest tires on the grid right now. As uh, Tioch goes to provisional pole, uh, or. Well, some, something changed around in the grid there. I'm not sure where it was. <laughs> um, as uh, qualifying finishes Matt, out here. Matt Rosen jumped up, maybe? Nah, he no, stayed he stayed third. Oh, and ZGS was having a really solid lap going there, but smacks the wall coming out of 14, oh. invalidates his lap, and has torched the right side of his car as well. Um, and I don't think he's going to be able to get another chance at a timed lap here. Forza Juve at... Uh, Forza Juve is going to sit second at the moment, but coming to the line, actually that is Matt Rosie in the Williams taking provisional pole by a very, very thin margin over Tioch. Tioch, by the way, coming down the uh, back straight now through the DRS section. I'm not sure how good of a lap he is on, but we'll be able to see got very Will. shortly. Got Will coming across on one. He's got four laps on these softs that he's on. And he jumps to P4 with that 108.933. And Tioc taking Take provisional pole. Wow. 
very solid lap there, putting two tenths of a second back on Matt Rosie. That gap from second to third, about two tenths of a second, so a little bit of gap between the front row and the second row, but a very solid lap at that. Matt Rosie made a very solid effort at that uh, pole position. Unfortunately, he did not get the opportunity to get pole. However, he still put in a very solid one at that. Next to the line, I believe, is going to be No Ganator, who has invalidated his lap. Unfortunate. Anyone else coming to time lapse here? Yeah, no, I believe we're... Sephron is in the pits and Matt Rosie in the pits. Next to the line is... Well, I think that's everyone, actually. So, Tioc taking pole position... Yeah. For the opening Grand Prix, Matt Rosie right next to him, a very star-studded front row here. Yeah, they gapped themselves a little bit from the second row there on time, about three-tenths, four-tenths for them, so get a jump out there, keep it clean. I think they got a good shot at it. The rain's going to be key, though. Um, I know there's some of the fastest guys out there can't do the rain, and that can screw them in the race, so could easily see one of those guys struggle in that sense and change at everything. I mean, we could see a guy from the back like Hightower, I know, he enjoys the rain. Um, he could sneak through and keep it clean. He could easily get a good spot. So, I mean, realistically, I think Matt Rosie is going to be starting on the left side of the grid here, so he is probably going to have the best line going into one. So I think I'm going to be looking out for Matt Rosie in particular as he's going to have the better line, though, as you said, with the rain race, no guarantees whatsoever, but that is going to round out our qualifying session as, and as soon as it changes over in 3-2-1. Now, let's go over the qualifying results. Tioch 91, taking pole for Ferrari. Matt Rosie in second. Forza Juve third. Will Anzen fourth. Soy Loco fifth. Nero Nixon sixth. El Capitano seventh. AP seventh is eighth. Detail ninth. Spool and Dub tenth. Ray in eleventh. Saffron twelfth. Domingos in thirteenth. Eight Altoni in fourteenth. Fifteenth is Noganator. Sixteenth is Ben Rice. Seventeenth is ZGS. 18th is Humble Hippo. Nineteenth is Racing Ginger. And rounding out the field starting in twentieth is Hightower. All right, so who's your podium prediction for this race? You know what? I definitely look at and see Ben's Rice as a possible podium finisher here, no doubt about his talent. Matt Rosie also there. I mean, th this is a really tightly contested first five cars, uh, and not to mention the rain is in play as well. Uh, you know, we could be in for somewhat of a surprise, but uh, I think my pick for at the moment is going to be Uncle Ben's Rice. I think he's looking really solid heading into this race. Yeah, he's. I think he is definitely one you always have to look at every race. Um, I'm going to go with Matt Rosie. I think he's going to keep on continuing. I think him, Tioch, and probably Will Ands would be my podium. I think those three are going to be the three to watch for this one. Well, I tell you what, we could not have scripted this first qualifying session any better. The top, what was it, eight cars all within one second of each other. An absolute, massively, closely contested qualifying session. One that I am definitely... <laughs> that was... Actually, I, I tell you what. I, I, I mean, prior to this season, you and I were saying in the Discord, uh, prior, we were we were saying, you know, oh, this is going to be... You know, this, this has the potential to be a really good season. Then we go to Austria last week for the showcase race, so the, the exhibition, whatever you want to call it. Then the expectations jumped up so much higher. It, it's, it's unbelievable. I think we are in for one heck of a season. This is, this is going to be absolutely exciting. Yeah, definitely is. As these divisions were getting sorted out in the off season, as I'm watching this one be built, I'm like, I think D2 is going to be the best racing of all four of the divisions we have going. And there's just, not one person you can really pick out to take this thing. Um, I think it's going to be constructors and um, driver championships going to come down to the line. And, you know, that was kind of what I was thinking last season as I was uh, going along with this division. I said to my, you know, over the course of the season, we obviously had the clear favorite uh, for the driver standings, which was Sadistic King, who unfortunately is no longer in the league. Uh, but even then, we were seeing different winners every week. Nobody had really a huge string of consistency, aside from Smith Pell within those last three, four races or so. This season is going to be completely different. There's going to be so much... 
there, there's going to be so much action in this league. As you said, this Drivers' and Constructors' Championship very well could come down to the wire, and I'm looking at Will Ann's Capitano and possibly Soy Loco started that countdown a little fast, but uh, I didn't have my timer going, but I'll look at that in post, make the note to editor myself. <laughs> All right, here we go. Got the countdown going. Got about five seconds. We'll get that formation lap started and get going. Uh, while we're waiting on that, I kind of want to go over. We did a little preseason poll for our favorites. Um, Uncle Ben's Rice took 44.4% of the votes for the Drivers' Championship. Um, had, I think, 39 total votes put in. Um, he kind of stole the show. After that, it was Matt Rosie at 19. AP7 was at 16, and Valentine was at 11. Um, the nice thing for Valentine tonight is reserving in D1, you actually can earn more points. Um, the points, the way they're set up is to factor in, if you reserve, you get a little more points, so that way it motivates these guys to go up and reserve in the higher divisions and see what they can do with those guys, so... Wish him some luck tonight, and hopefully he can pull out some points to carry over and bring on down with him. The start's going to be chaotic. Breaking into turn one's going to be in bananas. Exit of turn two. So I just want to point out here, we have a, we have a decent amount of drivers who are starting on the medium tire. Steph Ron Domingos, Adel Tony, Noganator, Ben's Rice, Racing Ginger, and Hightower will be starting on this medium tire. ZGS has gone for the hard compound, which uh, it doesn't appear that the track is completely soaked at the moment, but I still think that he's going to find a huge lack of grip on the hard compound for, this, uh, for the beginning of the race. Yeah, I actually had a race the other day that did that. It started in the rain. I qualified thinking I was going to start on intermediates, and, and it was dry enough to start on the softs, and I had burned them up. Oh, it was just it was horrible at the beginning. Um, but I still had more grip than the guys that were on hards. Um, hards in the rain are not any good. They will struggle with that for sure. But, I mean, it begs an interesting question. I mean, how much of that is going to come into play with, you know, how does this strategy play out from there? I mean, this is a 35-lap race. The hards could probably at least go 20, or, I mean, probably more than 20, but, I mean, obviously will have to box at some point. So, I mean, that begs the question. I mean, what exactly is his game plan for the for this race? Does he, you know, try to box around the later part of the race, maybe throw on some softs, maybe, uh, you know, pit midway through, put on the mediums, and just try to, you know, probably beat everyone out on the strategy? It's definitely going to be one of those strategy races for sure. If you can survive through the rain in the hards, it's a shot. But pit road here is probably one of the quicker ones you get through, I think. Um, and that's why I think a two-stop's great, but... If he can survive, definitely. Um, what has actually happened here? We've had... So someone has sure. gone mega early, and that was a Haas of Spool and Dub, who I can't tell if he has jumped the start or what, but my it was looked mega what? delayed for me. But as we see a little bit further back, Will Ends gets pushed off by Forza Juve. A little bit of a mix-up going on there side by side. Juve's got a little bit of lag going for him on my screen at least. Uh, but he's kind of been sorted out back into fifth. It looks like Capitano and AP7 battling it out. Capitano getting mega loose coming out of four. Uh, somehow keeps it off the barrier. He's got a yellow flag a little bit further back in the field. That looks like uh, it could potentially be ZGS who has gone off uh, on those hard compounds. As you said, was going to be struggling for grip. He's fallen all the way back to 20th on the start. Spool and Dub, I mean, had the best start of the race. I, I don't know if it looked a bit weird for you, but he had gone a lot earlier than everyone else, and the field uh, was at a big standstill. I'm not really sure if that was just my screen or not, but uh, that definitely looking, looked a little strange. Actually, looking in the Discord server here, it looks like maybe he's not in. Looks like maybe an AI did that. Really? Huh. So I'm wondering if I didn't see a penalty pop up though. It makes oh, me and we got a big reasons. incident here. Sorry to cut you off, but ZGS detail has both gone off, and I think the other McLaren of Domingos has also been caught up in that. Both McLarens having wing damage. 
definitely not what they wanted to see. Never mind Detail, who I think was on pace to have a pretty decent start. All three of those drivers taking a big hit, and it looks like the McLaren of Domingos will be coming in now. Zay GS is going to stay out at the moment, though you can tell he's really struggling for grip on those hard compounds. Meanwhile, Capitano has come in. And, I mean, for right now, this is a pretty closely contested race. A little bit further midway through the uh, field, Nero Nix and Soy Loco battling it out for the sixth spot. The big thing I see right now is Humble Hippo up 10 spots from 20th to 10th. Good start for him. Um, Spoolin's up 9, but that's because of the jump. Other than that, not a ton of movement around. Got some guys moving up a couple spots. But the big one, like I say, Humble Hippo up 10 spots. That's a good jump for him. And it looks like Sefron and Benz Rice are going to have a battle coming into turn 10. I'm just wondering how much, you know, grip these drivers are having going into that hairpin of turn 10. Surely that's got to make the braking zone about another 15 yards longer than it normally is. And it looks like Sefron has managed that better at the moment. He's put on about another half second over Benz Rice. At the moment, though, at the top end of the field, it looks like Matt Rosie. Oh, and Matt Rosie nearly loses it. Oh, and he does. Matt Rosie's hit the inside. Uh, has he? I was looking at someone there. Someone has, on my screen, went off. He, he was swerving back and forth for about five minutes. Oh, that's <laughs> oh and there goes Tiok. The what is happening it's in this race? Coming, I'm out of, <laughs> coming out of two there, three, spun it just right into the wall. Definitely had to knock the wing off. Oh, and he's not come back on a good part of the circuit either. He's come back in the in front of everyone, down to 11th. As you said, missing a big part of his wing. On Oh, and look what do we have here. Sephron trying to get the move on Humble Hippo. Hippo doing a decent job of trying to hold him off for now, but it looks like Sephron still wants that line. And who do we have that's gone off again? A yellow flag back. No, it still looks like uh, it's just recognizing Teox incident there. Here comes Benz Rice trying to get around the right side of Sephron as they go down into 10. Well, on my screen there, it looked like Matt Rosie absolutely binned it going down the front stretch into turn one. Must have just been my screen, but he was swerving so much, I thought he had completely lost it. But uh, apparently he yeah. hasn't. So uh, Got a DRS train coming down, coming to the front stretch now with Will, Matt Rosie, and Spoolin's, I'm guessing, AI car is what I'm going to say. Let me jump on quick and see. Yeah, he's still in AI or x out. So, but Will and Matt Rosie making a battle here for the lead. And these are two usual suspects we had, uh, especially from that exhibition race and previous knowledge. These two drivers, definitely a lot of pace. Looks like Soy Loco and Nero have already picked up penalties for what I assume are track limits, and that is exactly what's happened. There are a couple cars choosing to go in now that it, that's going to be Teok who has entered the pits. Uh, but it looks like now a very decently contested race at the mo moment. Forza Juve maybe trying to make the move on the... AI question mark of Spool and Dub, who I think is definitely in AI at this point, as uh, Forza is just completely blown past him. Um, kind of unfortunate yeah, there. Spool and was in a really good position for this race. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I'm kind of trying to keep up with him here in the Discord, and yeah, I sent him a couple invites. Just seems like he's having trouble getting in, and when he does get in, it kicks him right back out. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, that's that's always disappointing. It's you know you wait all week to get this race done and then you have internet issues or whatever it may be, and it just it's frustrating. It's you know it's just got to be a letdown, especially if, for him. You know he's one of those guys that can compete up front. Well, speaking of competing up front, Matt Rosie has now increased the gap to one point, to a second and a half now as they exit turn one. Meanwhile, it looks like Soy Loco possibly still trying to get on the back of Forza Juve a little bit. May have actually made a little bit of contact there with Nero Nix uh, to his rear end. Meanwhile, AP7 wants to move on Nero Nix. About a three-car battle here for this fourth spot, not to mention Ray starting to move up on this little battle as well. So possibly stuff to look out there, uh, look out for there, not to mention here is Ben's Rice. He's still battling with Sephron. AP7, can he possibly get around Nero this time by? It looks like Ray may have gone in the grass behind him uh, on exit of seven. Uh, yes, that, it, that was turn seven. Oh, maybe got in the grass on the exit of seven, lost a little bit of ground. But uh, I tell you what, 
This is shaping up to be a solid race already. Let's see who's going to get a good run into 10. Soy Loco's gotten a big lockup, gone really wide. AP7 into the rear of Nero, and for, for now, it stays the same. Yeah, I was just watching these guys, uh, Sephron and Uncle Ben's, uh, Adel Tony, and working around spooling. Um, you know, just taking their time. Sometimes those AI cars can be unpredictable, so taking their time looked like everybody kept it clean. And it is just a big train with Adel Tony and at the back following. Oh, no and it DRS. looks like we've had ZGS go off over in turn 10 uh, in the infield there. I saw the yellow flag pop up, and we saw him over uh, kind of in the middle of that. Um, very unfortunate start to this race for him. Uh, doesn't look like he's missed out on too many positions at the moment, but definitely not the start that he wanted. Yeah, like I say, the hards, um, me personally, I, I wouldn't even pick the hards in dry conditions here. <laughs> not a fan of them. I, I just don't think they have the grip you need to get around here clean. Um, too many spots to slide. Ooh, his humble slid it out. It lets Uncle Ben's by. And maybe Adel Tony will get by him too, or as you call him, A, right? Adel, well, yeah, I mean, there was everybody, all the commentators that I've known pronounce everybody different ways, so uh, we, we know who you're talking about is the uh, the Ferrari of Adel Tony, but uh, as I was along, oh, what's this here? Sephron trying to go around the inside of Ray 46 in 10, gets the majority of the grass. Uh, somehow doesn't spin it out of that corner considering that he was in the grass. Definitely didn't do his tires any favor as Nero looks to get past Soy Loco. I'm actually a little bit concerned with Soy Loco. Oh, and that's big contact there. Soy Loco going into the pits now picks up wing damage, which I think he had a little bit already after uh, we saw him, at least on my screen, hit the wall coming out uh, down the DRS section uh, of turn seven going into that. I believe he hit the wall then, was able to hold off I uh, believe it was Nehru at the time, though he has lost the position now. Uh, but as we just saw there, Nehru and Deet, uh, Nehru and Soy Loco making a little bit of contact there going into 13. I'm not entirely sure that uh, Soy Loco got the breaking zone right. Oh, and there's Nehru into the wall. He's uh, he spun it in a very awful part of the track uh, going into turn six. Looks like he's lost a bit of wing, comes on the track oh, yeah. safely. Though I tell you what, he's definitely lost some positions there, and that's a shame because he was having a very solid race going at the moment. Ben's Rice and Sephron side by side. Oh, and now Ben's Rice has gone around. He got into the side of Sephron, tried to make a move stick. I think he may have gotten the braking zone a little bit wrong considering he had to move around his teammate there, and I guess he just didn't leave him too much space. Unfortunate stuff there as uh, Uncle Ben's Rice drops all the way back down to 12th. Uh, doesn't have any wing damage, but that's definitely not what he needed. Yeah, definitely not a good lap for the Renaults there. Uh, Nero definitely is missing a big chunk of his right wing. You know, you'd imagine he'd probably be pitting here. Yep, there he goes, so that's going to drop him back. We'll see what he goes on for tires here, see what his idea is, see if he can stretch some hards or something. As we move up into the field a little bit more, Sephron still trying to wear down Ray 46. Now, Sephron is on the medium compound. Uh, though, you know, obviously the softs are going to start to wear away, but for right now, the softs were probably the better choice, as obviously the softs are going to have a little bit more grip uh, in these wet conditions, uh, as we see Sephron nearly sliding around uh, turn six there, as, or uh, turn five there, as I say that. Uh, but at the moment, very closely contested uh, between these kind of three drivers in the midfield of AP7, Ray 46, and Sephron, and then starting to close in a little bit behind them is Adaltonian. Yeah, definitely. We have some battles going here. Um, stretched out some other spots of the field, but these four guys are keeping it nice and close, showing some good battles. Um, for the most part, it's been pretty clean. I'm happy to see we haven't had any safety car VSCs or anything, so it's a good way to start this race. Um, with the softs, I'd say they probably got you know three, four more laps of good tires until they start wearing off. Probably start seeing pit stops about three or four laps. Oh, and Ray's going around on exit of 14. He was just behind, uh, he was just behind AP7 there. Did not get the line correctly. I think he maybe hit the uh, maybe a little bit of the grass on exit of 14, but he has gone around, and now look at the position he is in on the exit of 14. Doesn't have really any chance to turn the car around and not lose too many positions. So, so unfortunate for him there. It looks like Humble Hippo came in 
get off those softs went to mediums with no wing change so he's just changing tires up so it looks like they are starting And I mean, now it's the question of how can Ray manage to get this car around the circuit with absolutely no front wing whatsoever, uh, not to mention the wet conditions. He's back down to 16th. I, I mean, this has not been the start that he wanted whatsoever. But at the moment, Matt Rosie definitely pulling out to a very strong lead here, almost seven and a half seconds uh, from him back to second place. And then back to third, it's about five, uh, it's almost six seconds. As we see here, AP7 trying to get, uh, trying to defend from Sephron, and Sephron is going to go around him for now. Adeltonian playing it safe. Oh, and uh, AP7's gone into the back of Sephron, going into 13, and now he's lost his front wing. The amount of chaos we are seeing on these early laps, it's, it's extraordinary. Well, the, you know, it's one of those things he was, I think he was going to pit there. I think that was his, his whole demeanor from the beginning of that straightaway, but you have to be careful when you're behind somebody pitting there because their breaking point's way different than yours is. You essentially have to break early if you're behind somebody, and looks like he didn't get it slowed down in time, and now he's going to have an extra five, six seconds in the pits because of it. And that's yeah, and as you said, this is this is now I think the third time we've seen someone rear end somebody as the the car in front of them was trying to take turn 13 and the car behind was trying to go into the pit. So yeah, absolutely, definitely uh, a different braking zone for both uh, uh, both people in that situation there. Uh, but as it stands, Sephron has retaken the lead behind him. Uh, Matt Rosie has dropped to third. He's uh, I believe fitted the medium tires. Yep, he's made a stop yep. along with Will Ann's behind him about two and a half seconds back so uh, I, I tell you what that gap is starting to close up a little bit uh, racing ginger potentially trying to make the moves on Ben's rice uh, we'll have to check back in on that is that starting to spread out a little bit more but at the moment Sephron has the lead on those medium tires and uh, he started on the medium compound so he'll be good for at least another what f five to seven laps probably yeah I think you can get you know if you push him real hard you can probably get about 18 or 18 maybe 19 out of them um, after that you're really sliding around um, if they're two stop and I'd imagine we'll see him here probably about lap 15 16 well the good news is though is that the rain appears to have stopped so we will no longer have any of those uh, people in the harder compound starting to slip around the circuit as we had earlier uh, but here comes Matt Rosie along the right hand side of Adaltonian through the DRS section Matt Rosie takes him on and gets the position with ease uh, big lockup going into turn nine though for Matt Rosie lost a little bit more ground so this fight it definitely isn't over uh, let's see if Adeltonian can possibly make up time going into the corner as we see Forza Juve picking up three seconds for multiple warnings. And as we look at the penalties, uh, Soy Loco and Nero Nix both sitting on six seconds. So, I, I mean, potentially we could see a race decided uh, by penalties, especially some positions. I doubt it's going to be anyone within the top uh, five, but you never know. It's definitely possible. Yeah, I think we'll see them. They might rack up, a, you know, three seconds there at the end. Um, but, you know, if you're already at six seconds and we're not even halfway into this thing, it's going to be a long day. I know the the uh, original season one opener for Midwest, I think it was Kenny had like 30 seconds or 27 seconds in penalties. So <laughs> we've seen some big numbers on the penalties. So Canada's known for it. Absolutely. Well, I've just, uh, as I was along with Adel Tony, and it looks like the pit window is now going to be open for him uh, as he will go be going on the soft compounds as well as, I believe, uh, well, as Will Ants gets past him. But I think that's also going to be the case for Ben's Rice and Sephron as well. Uh, as we saw, Will Ants now picking up the third spot. He's, about, he's got about six sec uh, three seconds of gap uh, to Matt Rosie. Matt Rosie, by the way, trying to challenge for the lead here around his Williams teammate of Sephron. And it looks like Matt Rosie is going to get the position just sheerly outpacing uh, Sephron. But I think Sephron's probably going to be coming in this lap as I predicted. Let's see what he does. And nope, Sephron's oh. going to be staying out again. So Matt Rosie genuinely taking the lead here. Uh, Adaltonian also choosing to stay out another lap, despite uh, the graphic telling me otherwise. But uh, you know, how can you ever trust those? Am I right? I think for Sephron, as you're you're behind your teammate, you're going to have DRS down that front stretch. You know, it's you can gain a little bit there. 
Um, maybe take away the undercut that anybody tries on you. I, I usually try to stay out if I can, if I have DRS at least a little bit. It's only four drivers have yet to stop. That is Saffron City, Eight Eltonian, Ben's Rice, and Racing Ginger. Uh, all of those drivers fitted the medium tire on the start of the race. Um, only two, dri uh, three drivers that aren't currently on the medium tires. That's Capitano, ZGS, and the Noganator, who are on soft, soft, and then hard, respectively. So a little bit of a differential in the strategies. Not a lot, though. I think uh, for the most part, we've seen some of these guys uh, start on the softs. Pretty much everyone in the top, I think, 11 started on the softs. So, oh, Ray has picked up Ray. five seconds for speeding into the pit lane, and he has gone and, uh, well, he's retired in the pits, unfortunately, as uh, he was not having the race of his dreams, that's for sure. Kind of unfortunate as well. He had a really good opportunity in this race, and it's kind of a shame to see it go Sephron out like that. Just got a, Sephron just got a five second into the pits, also. Ooh, that one's going to hurt later on. I'm yeah, watching Uncle Ben's right now. He's in the middle of Forza, Forza and A Deltonian. Um, Forza behind him with nine lap pressure tires. I think right now he's just back there stalking a little bit, trying to hope they make a mistake and he can take it. We'll see what happens. And I tell you what, yeah, Adol, Tony, and Ben's Ben Rice, definitely the sitting ducks here, uh, as well as Racing Ginger back there in seventh. But here comes Ben Rice around the right-hand side of Adol, Tony. Uh, it looks like Adol, Tony is just getting a, uh, pretty much outpaced at the moment. We've seen him uh, get driven around that time going into turn eight uh, from Uncle Ben's Rice. But uh, I tell you what, maybe he's just trying to keep it a little bit more conservative, maybe try to stretch the tires out a little bit more. Can't blame him whatsoever as uh, Noganator. Also, a retirement yeah. for both Red Bulls here. Not the start to the hurt. season that they wanted. Yeah, that one definitely is going to hurt. That's going to come out with zero points as Uncle Ben's goes into the pits here after 13 laps on those or 14 laps on those mediums, see what he goes with. A Deltonian stayed out while Forza got around him. And now I, I would imagine A Deltonian has got to be coming in this lap. If he's not coming in in the next couple, I think he's trying to go for the one-stop stretch. Well, I'm just curious to, on how many positions he's going to lose if he does choose to pit. I mean, he's in a really weird spot. I mean, he's got a decent gap I mean, back to, that that's the Haas of Racing Ginger, but then behind him is about, oh, six cars, so he's definitely in a spot where he has to pit this lap. I mean, he's definitely the sitting duck at the moment, definitely losing uh, the most time as uh, Soy Loco looks to make the overtake on him. He's going to be trying the left side, possibly. Adeltonian doing some solid defensive driving into the corner. They go. Nice by Soy Loco to not rear-end him as it was kind of a uh, short breaking zone there by Adeltonian. But yeah, he's definitely losing a lot of time and you'll have to, and I assume it's going to be coming in this lap. Yeah, and I think he'll probably go, he'll come into 12th probably right where uh, Uncle Ben's is. He'll, he'll drop in behind him. Looks like Uncle Ben's went to medium, so he's looked like he's probably going to a medium, medium soft. I was on the wrong thing there. I was switching through the interval instead of the uh, tire <laughs> compounds. But yeah, I mean, so Eight Altonian becomes the third driver on the soft compound, which, you know, could be something to look at. I mean, he'll have to stop it. I mean, I think everybody's going to have to stop at least one more time. Uh, so, I mean, you know, maybe the people that go to these soft tires at the end, uh, I'm not sure who that's going to be. However, uh, I would assume whoever puts on the soft tires at the end of the stint um, is oh, definitely going to be the favorite here. Oh, and who's that that's gone off? That is detail. the... That is detail. coming out of two. Ooh. Right in front of Adel Tony as he came out of the pits. And that, I believe, is the second time we've seen detail in the barriers uh, in this race. Very, very unfortunate for him. Uh, not the start to the nice. season that he may have wanted. Though I will say his teammate of Soy Loco is having a pretty solid day at the moment in fourth. Uh, definitely not bad at all for him. Definitely got a tight battle going from six down to ten. As Humble Hippo leads that with uh, AP... Or oh, this is tight. Oh, oh, I saw this coming. 
I saw that happening. There was no That's way a... you're going side by side through 13 and 14. I'm sorry, that yeah. was a bit risky. The only way you're getting through there is picking up a warning or a penalty. Um, there's just no way to run two cars through there. As we've seen, Racing Ginger coming in now, fitting the soft compounds. Uh, he started on the mediums, went the current distance of uh, 17 laps on those medium tires. He's going to come out in 14th, but uh, I tell you what, some of these guys on the soft compound might be making a charge to, uh, towards the end, though I think they might be on the wrong end of the strategy when it comes to crunch time. Uh, but you never know. Something could work in their favor. Uh, you know, maybe a safety car or something will throw all that out the window, and we'll just have to go off of instincts here as we see AP7 maybe trying to get past Sephron City for this sixth spot going into 10 and it looks like Sephron's going to keep it for now but they still have the DRS zone to worry about yeah I think if you came out on soft here and uh, you know safety car comes out in the next you know five six seven laps I think you're actually set up good because your your guys then went medium to medium they would have to then go to hards or do a two-stop from there because they'd have to do softs. Um, so you could be set up well with a safety car. Other than that, I think you're having to stretch your mediums that long in that first stint, I think, really hurt them to drop back. Hey, dude. What the f*** was that? I was just on the straight, and someone just f***ing ran me over the wall. What the hell was that? And Matt Rosie has once again opened up the gap to second place. Uh, now eight and a half seconds back on Will Ans, and he's starting to find a little bit of traffic here as uh, Domingos is there. And uh, well, he's got open track ahead of Domingos. But I tell you what, Matt Rosie absolutely dominating this race. But as we mentioned, a safety car would throw all of that out the window um, and definitely restack this field. And that was you know, probably where we'll see the most differential going on. Oh, and Sephron's gotten into the back of AP7. I think AP7 made the pass uh, going into 10. And I think AP7, well, he keeps the position for now. Benzerice now under pressure from Tioc behind him. Uh, Tioc is on 14 lap old medium tires uh, as he's, uh, you know, trying to pass the Renault of Uncle Benzerice, who's on three lap old medium. It's probably going to be a task for him to make that stick. However, very close battle here, uh, kind of midway through the field. Meanwhile, here comes Ben Rice now around the right side of Sephron. He's going to try it well, and Sephron also picks up three seconds. So it looks like Ben Rice has actually done a really solid job to make up that spot. Yeah, I just pulled up the penalties again. Looks like, you know, some guys have really picked up penalties now. You got Hightower is up to 15 seconds. Soy is up to 9. Sephron's up to 11. Um, so, you know, you're looking at some position changes for sure with those um, but your top two guys keeping it clean running away with this thing and then I think AP and Uncle Ben are sitting real good right now because they have no penalties and they're not too far off those, that group not at all but I think the thing with AP7 right now that gap is starting to uh, well I mean it's staying kind of close in around two and a half seconds at the moment uh, Nehru ahead of him just trying his best to keep that gap as far away as he possibly can. Meanwhile, here's Ben's Rice trying to possibly move up into 6th. He's not going to have it, obviously, going through 13 and 14, as he's learned from Sephron and uh, whoever it was that collided with him earlier. But here comes Ben Rice around the left side of AP7 as they go into 1. AP7 maybe clips a little bit of the grass. Now, who's going to get the better line here through 2? That's absolutely crucial. And it looks like AP7 is going to do just that. Holds the position for now, but that battle is nowhere near over. Yeah, definitely. These guys are putting on a show here. You know, we're 20 laps into this thing, and we still have some close battles, which is always good to see. I hate when they get stretched out. and we got two-second gaps between everybody. Um, they're definitely giving us a show, giving us plenty to, to watch, and to commentate on, you know, it's nice to see that. Absolutely, and well, here's Tioch trying to... Oh, and Ben's Rice has gotten a very, very poor exit of turn eight, spinning the tires, probably hitting the grass, and now losing two spots there, dropping back to ninth position. Sephron and Tioch going past him. I'm not sure if any contact was made with AP7. I'm not... I doubt that happens, uh, though I'm not sure, obviously. The majority of the field now, as you said, picking up the penalties, but I will say... Uh, they're not 
not a lot of them are, you know, these three-second penalties. A lot of these are, you know, six seconds or above, so we could be seeing a big shuffle in positions come the end of the race, and, you know, we still have 14 laps to go. I mean, it, this very well could be a race that's very, very much jumbled because of the penalties, and here we see Tiox still trying to make, uh, to work on Sephiron City, who... I mean, it looks like Sephron has been holding his position very well at the moment, and he's definitely on the fresher tires as well. Tioch doing a good job despite being on 17-lap old mediums, so he's going to be under pressure here from Ben's Rice very shortly as they now head into the DRS section. Uh, do, you, do you see Tioch pitting soon? I mean, he's on 17 laps of medium tires. I mean, surely he's going to have to come in soon. Yeah, I would imagine those things got to be getting the bot to the end of their life. Um... He might be trying to get three more out of them so we can go to soft because you can go 10 or so on the soft so and I don't remember he started on soft so he could go either way with it if he's going mediums he's got to come now though definitely he stays, out, he stays out I'm, I'm saying he's going soft at the end yeah, and I tell you what, we just saw him have a big tire spin coming out of turn 10, uh, big enough to lose the position to Uncle Ben's Rice uh, as AP7 AP. enters the pits now, Boy. as well yeah, as AP7 Soy. Soy. But I tell you what, this round of pit stops might close things up a little bit more. I mean... Uh, I would assume there's going to be more differential in strategy now as we get towards the end of the race. Some driver's probably going to try to make the overcut here, but I know for a fact some of these dudes who are on the, uh, you know, seven, eight lap old tires, as we see Ben's Rice and Saffron City, they'll probably be good and they'll probably make up enough time to make the overcut successful um, and then have... I, I'm not sure if they'll be able to pin again for softs. I don't remember what they started on, but... Uh, Assume, assume if they could go on to softs, as we see Matt Rosie entering the pits now. You know, some of these guys on the newer medium tires could be uh, very well set for the end of this race. Yeah, definitely. Um, just trying to get my... Apparently my chat is not going through on my stream, so just trying to get that sorted quick. Ah. I don't know why, because I have it turned on. As it would appear, Hightower has picked up three seconds of penalties. Uncle Ben's Rice making a nice move on Saffron City and getting the position, so he now moves up into fourth. Will Anz, who was previously in second place, is going to be coming out, oh, about seventh here as he's fitted fresh mediums. He's actually going to be side-by-side -side with Tioc coming out of the pits, and it looks like he's gotten the better of Tioc for now. Tioc still yet to pit, currently the oldest tires in the field, and there goes Saffron picking up three more seconds. That's going to put him up to 14 definitely not what he wanted to start his campaign uh, but I mean this is I, I mean we kind of expected this going into this race that there'd be a lot of penalties and I, I mean that's exactly what we're seeing here um, hopefully that trend doesn't continue into the uh, these next couple races or so but uh, I mean definitely a normal sight here at Canada yeah definitely like I said honestly I'm surprised there's what one two three Six without penalties that's actually surprising to me <laughs> I don't see any races here that doesn't have 95% of somebody has at least three seconds but um, you know I've I think I've only had two or three finishes here where I haven't had any and that's that's tough to do that's not yeah that sounds like a big achievement if I'm completely honest that sounds actually super impressive well next week we go to Bahrain short so that's not gonna be a track decided by penalties then after that, we go to Monaco, which uh, that's, uh, I'm not sure that's going to be decided on penalties, and more or less it's going to be decided on safety cars, but... Um, I think we should, the contest should be who has the most wing changes wins, because I would definitely win if I was racing. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I, I, tell you, I, I tell you what, I mean, oh, I tell you what, though, we did see a very good race at Monaco the last time we were there. Uh, for Div 2 and the other divisions as well. Had a very good showing at the track as well. So Loco picks up another three seconds. So I'm definitely looking forward to that race. I think it's a very, very exciting last time as we have Ben Zarice trying to make the move on his teammate in second place of Nero Nix. Uh, behind him, Saffron City also wants into this mix as well as Will Ann. So we've got about four cars here up for this second spot potentially. Yeah, it looks like Nero is on 16 lap old saw or medium, so he's got to be getting to the end of those. And there he goes. He's actually going in. I'd imagine he's going to the softs. 
And we get a yellow in Sector 3. Looks like ZGS retired in the pits. Ugh. Unfortunate there for ZGS. I was uh, confused on his idea with starting on the hards, and it didn't play out for him well whatsoever. Um, spinning on the first lap, and uh, the only driver that's gone onto the hard compound is Domingos, who uh, is going to finish out this race on the hard compound, six lap old. I would have imagined he would have taken that on his first stop, though he's choosing to take it now. Uh, so a little bit interesting there, as we saw previously, Will Ans moved up into third. Could he potentially get second on Ben's Rice, uh, who's in front of him? Ben's Rice still has yet to pit on those 10 lap old medium tires. I'm gonna... Did Uncle Ben... Did he start on mediums, do you remember? Uncle Ben... I'm not really sure if I'm honest. I think he started he on started sauce. sauce. I get a feeling he might be stretching these things. You might have to. I mean, he's uh, currently getting overtaken by Will Ends going into turn 13. Very well done there from Will Ends. So, yeah, I guess at the moment our predictions are holding true of M Matt Rosie, Will Ends, and Uncle Ben's Rice at the uh, in the top three at the moment as Soy Loco picks up another penalty. That puts him up to 18 seconds, currently tied for most in the field along with Hightower. Not necessarily a statistic uh, you want to your name, but one that he has at the moment. And I pulled a position change here. Uncle Ben's at 13 spots up. Humble Hippo at 9. Racing Ginger at 5. So that's your big movers. Um, big droppers, Ray down 9 as he retired in the pits. First one out. And then we got a mixture of them at 5 with Detail and Spoolin, which Spoolin, I believe, is still out. I don't believe he ever got back in. So some movers. Um, kind of expected Uncle Ben's to move up. Um, his qualifying was the best, so I figured he would get a good jump and move up there. So you do think Ben's Rice can stick these tires to the end, though? I mean, 20 laps on the medium, it, it sounds like he's pushing it, but I, I think it's definitely possible. Yeah, I mean, if he pits, he's probably looking probably 10th, 11th area. If he stays out, I'm going to say he could probably hold on to the top 6, 7 if he stays out and can manage those tires it just depends on what everybody else does let's see everybody is behind him uh, tx behind him with 23 lap old medium so he's, he's so we know we could go 20 laps tire. then <laughs> yeah so he definitely i i think he's stretching them and i think it's going to work out for him it might it not be a podium but it's definitely going to work yeah, I tell you what, and the field is starting to get a little bit more dispersed now, so he's got a lot of time before he starts losing, you know, serious positions. In fact, he's got a decent gap back on uh, fifth? Uh, no, third of uh, Tioc. So, I mean, you never know. I, I mean, potentially we could uh, see him go to the end. I guarantee you he will. I'm not sure when Tioc's going to come in. I'm assuming he's really struggling on those mediums to see his him locking up and going into 10, so I would assume he's probably pitting within the next three laps. I'd be surprised if he didn't. Yeah, I'm honestly not sure. That's uh, Those things got to be over 70 by now. And there he goes. So he's going to go throw on some softs. I would imagine we'll probably see a new fast lap here from him. You know, he's got the pace. I think he's going to come out with some soft, slow fuel if I think fast lap's going to end up going to Tioc here in the end, unless somebody else sneaks in for some softs. I will say, though, it's not done him too bad. He's going to, at the most, go down to ninth, assuming uh, Sephiron gets him into one, which I don't think is going to happen. Nope, I so I, I tell you what, that's not been terribly done from Tioc. Uh, maybe stretching the tires was the right choice, and now he's put on the softs at the end of the race. He's got... A pretty sizable gap up to Nero Nix in seventh, but I, I tell you what, those soft tires definitely will be cutting through that very shortly, though. I don't think he has all the time in the world to get to it. He's definitely going to have to start pushing right now. Well, and you know, I didn't even think about it, but I pulled it up. You got penalties. So behind Uncle Ben, you got Forza with 12 and Soy with 18. So even if they pass him, he's okay with them. So then you got AP behind him with no penalties, who's over 10 seconds behind him. I think he. He actually might hold on to this podium when those. 
Speaking of penalties, it would appear Matt Rosie has picked up three seconds, but that chops down the gap to 11 seconds. He's absolutely dominating this race. And I, I tell you what, this was kind of the trend that we saw at Abu Dhabi last season before his power went out and his AI had to take over. He was also putting on a show at this race. And uh, I mean, it's obviously too early to tell, but he has been one of the favorites to possibly make the early move up into Div 1 when the, uh, when the time comes. And I think this result could potentially prove that. He's definitely in for it. As uh, Oh, who do we have off there? That looks like Humble Hippo has gone around in 13 and 14. Did he potentially try to go into the pits? Oh, I'm not sure, but he has completely lost his front wing, and that is a virtual safety car. He, he must have left some on the track to get a VSC there. If he's going into the pits and knocked a wing off, I mean, we had how many of those and didn't have anything? It's kind of funny he brings out a VSC now. So an interesting turn of events, to say the least, but at the moment, Matt Rosie still in the lead, Will Ann second, Ben's Rice in third with about two seconds of gap. Back to Forza Juve, who is in fourth. Uh, though does have 12 seconds of penalties behind him, Soy Loco in fifth with 18 seconds, AP7 in sixth, uh, Nero in seventh, eighth is Tiak, ninth is Sephron, and tenth is Capitano. So at the moment, we really only know that pretty much the top three I can see is going to stay potentially the same unless something happens. Oh, and Soy Loco has actually picked so up I a picked drive through drive penalty. Through. Wow, an interesting turn of events there, and someone's lost a front wing ahead of him. That could potentially be. Uh, well, someone's definitely lost an end plate, that's for sure. I saw it rolling across the track. Oh, we've got a Haas off uh, in Sector 2. I believe that is Spool and Dub, and yeah, he has really gone off there, I believe, on exit of Turn 8. Not to mention we have the, uh, oh, we've got the McLaren of Domingos, uh -huh. who's off there. Uh, I believe he that's was turn... trying to turn around. I just flipped over to him. He was trying to turn around and got disqualified. Disqualified? Yeah. And Capitano is retired. Way. Oh, Cap something has ha actually happened to Capitano here. He is... <laughs> something has actually happened to him. How has he been... Like how is it DNF? Uh, I, I mean, He's hopefully Matt Rosie's camera... Hopefully Matt Rosie's camera angle will be able to catch up to him to actually see where he's gone off. And, uh, yeah, he is... Ooh, and he's at the right side. So did he potentially get loose out of turn... Ooh. Two and hit the wall through three is my guess. Yeah, that's a tough one. That... Yeah, definitely Uncle Ben is set now for that podium. He's just got to stick to it, finish this race. Looks like Racing Ginger picked up a drive through during that VSC also. So a couple drivers up to, <laughs> there's so one, two, three drivers up to double digits in penalties. That's Forza Juve, Soy Loco, who now is up to 21, and then Hightower back there with 18 seconds. So basically the top three, <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to say guaranteed because anything can happen, but the top three oh, yeah. looks pretty good at the moment. Forza Juve, we're not sure where he's going to come out. It's probably... I, I tell you what, though, he might be okay considering a lot of drivers behind him have penalties, so you never know. I'm not sure how the math is going to play out there, but... Uh, uh, looks like he'll lose one spot to AP. I think that's it. Um, hmm. You got nine for Niru, six for Tiak, and 21 for Soy. I don't think they're going to jump him. So, yeah, I think he's going to be... He's going to get his top five out of it. AP's going to pull into a P4 as it stands, so these guys keeping their keeping it clean are going to be the ones that are going to benefit the most here. Absolutely, and that has been the case all race so far. I mean, we, we saw at the beginning of the race, it was an absolute mess with the rain that was there, and the guys that chose the medium tires were definitely the ones that did not benefit from that, as we saw lots of uh, conundrum there within those first five laps or so, and then once it started to clear out a little bit, it got a little, it got a lot better, the race got a lot cleaner, um, only a VSC at the moment, don't want to uh, jinx anything just yet, but uh, the only one VSC at the moment, so I, I tell you what, this has been a very good race so far, and uh, 
tell you what, this is this is going to be one heck of a season uh, at, at the moment. At the moment? What am I talking about? I'm starting to lose track of everything. Uh, <laughs> um, this is going to be a good season, as we see lots of contenders for this. I mean, Will Anz, despite being behind Matt Rosie, has definitely faced some adversity in this race. He's done very good. Uncle Ben's racing a good spot as well. So, uh, is it too early to see who the favorites are? Probably, as uh, this is definitely a very even division. But uh, at the moment, Matt Rosie, Will Anz, and Uncle Ben's Rice definitely getting the best start uh, to this first to this season. Yeah, I think it might be a little early, but I think your your top three here, I think, are gonna be your top three to really watch, mixed in with some of the other guys. But I think those three are really gonna be the battle. Oh, and what's this I mean, racing kinda... ginger has been disqualified for ignoring the drive-through penalty, oh. and so now he is pulled off to the right side of the circuit in a very interesting spot on exit of turn two. Hopefully that doesn't result in some sort of VSC or anything. That would be unfortunate to say the least. No, usually they don't. Um, the disqualifies, they just pull them off like, kind of like if they were to retire on track, but they have no control over it. So my best guess is he got that as he passed the pits and then it just took control, so. Nothing we, he can do with that. He should have should have served it, but you know, it's, might have just been having a rough day and decided to ignore it. And we only have 14 running. You know, think about was it not even seven laps ago we had 18 running. Yeah, I was about to say we have only 14 cars left in the field. That is a little surprising to me, as I would have. Obviously, you're going to find DNFs no matter what track you go to, but I was assuming we'd at least have about 17 left. Instead, we're only left with 14, so a little disappointing there. But uh, you know, this has been a, this has been a very interesting and wild race, to say the least. As far as you know, with everybody having penalties, uh, I, I think. I would be surprised to see more than seven cars haven't changed a wing at this point. Um, but I mean, yeah, as we start this final lap of the race, Matt Rosie, as he heads through sector two now, I mean, it's it's he's got a 20 second gap to Will Ends now. It's been a very solid showing for him, but it looks like hey, Uncle Uncle Ben in the pits. Ben's Rice has gone into the pits. Did he just? I mean, I'm not sure what's happened there. We we were predicting that he was going to make the uh, the mediums last to the end. Uh, did he? Uh, he just I, I, by doing that, unless he had, unless he had a puncture, because he'll he'll still jump back up to fourth. Um, yeah, it looks like no, probably fifth. So he's going to lose two spots by that. I'm going to say he probably had a puncture. That. Yeah, would that be would be my best guess. I mean, he didn't. We, we saw Tioch go, I think, 23 laps on the medium tires, but to the line comes Matt Rosie taking the win in week one of the season by a substantial margin, 18 seconds before the penalties. Uh, Will and still making his way to the line now. I tell you what, it's been a very solid race for Will Anz. Uh Nothing to complain about on uh, from his perspective. Maybe that he couldn't have caught Matt Rosie a little sooner and maybe given him a little bit more of a challenge. However, I will say, very solid result for Will Enns. Forza Juve across the line in third uh, before penalties. Yeah, AP7. Like AP yep. yep. And then the rest of it, uh, the rest of it I'm not even going to try to predict as the penalties yeah. are going to mess everything up here. So Ben's oh, Rice does jump into fifth. Big numbers. <laughs> yeah, so he'll end up fifth, but like I say, I think I'm going to assume he had to have a puncture. There's just no way you give up a podium for a last lap pit. But at the well, end of the go. day, Matt Rosie taking the win in commanding fashion. Very well done. And then Will Ann's finishing second. And then I believe uh, AP7 taking third. Uh, that's obviously, if I can't see it, I, <laughs> I'll get it wrong. So it could be could be dreadfully wrong here as I tend to do so sometimes. So we will hopefully get to those interviews after the race. But a very solid start to the season from the Williams driver of Matt Rosie. And uh, I, I tell you what. 
the constructor standings are going to be really jumbled considering that I don't think there was consistency in much any of these teams aside from maybe Ferrari probably had one of the more consistent days on the grid. But uh, I tell you what, very, very interesting first round. I went ahead and added them. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, nice that, is always, pick, huh? <laughs> that is always a mess at the end of the race. Sometimes they just kind of leave after. But, uh, Monkey, do you want to run through our final order here? All right, so we had Matt Rosen with the win, and then Will Ann's AP7, Forza. Uncle Ben's pulling in the top five. You got Tiak in six, Miru seven, Sephron City eight, A Deltonian ninth, Soy Loco 10th, Detail 11th, Spoolin at 12th, Humble Hippo goes to 13th, Hightower in 14th, and then the DNFs of El Capitano, ZGS, Noganator, Ray, Racing Ginger, and Domingos. Okay, so I am here with two out of the three podium finishers, AP7 and Will Ends. We'll start with you, AP7. So a very solid race for you, picking up the third spot. I, I mean, so... How did you go? Did you go into this race kind of with the mindset of, oh, do I stay clear of penalties? Because that's one of the things that really helped you in this race. Yeah, yeah. So I knew that this was going to be a penalty fest. So I thought, okay, let's keep it clean, especially near the wall of champions. So you know, you can always take advantage of that, and you can see people got massive penalties. Nine seconds, twelve seconds were all over the place. So I was like, okay, okay, like I'll sacrifice some pace, but uh, but then it gave me and I would have no penalties and it's like do i really want to gain that 10th and get a three second penalty and it was a no-brainer hey guys hey matt rosie welcome uh we'll get to you in just a minute so ap7 back to you again uh bar mm-hmm. short next next week uh how do you feeling about that track it's been kind of the idea of that being put on the schedule has been tossed around for such a long time do you uh how do you feel about that uh I actually look forward to it. I haven't actually played it that much, so I don't know where I stand amongst other people. So I got to go and practice a little bit. So I don't know, uh, but I'm excited, though. Absolutely. Monkey, do you have anything to add? I'll add about Bahrain short. That's some good stuff right there. <laughs> Absolutely. I've no, been Great drive, I, AP. That was uh, the patience to not have the penalties. That's, you know, that's key in that race. Is that what... Uh, were you focused on just keeping it clean then and, and making sure you yeah. got to win? Yeah, I mean, I did have one moment, though. Like, uh, I think it was before I pitted first, I missed my breaking point, and I hit, I don't remember who it was. I have to watch my stream again. Uh, luckily, I don't think anything happened to them, but I did have wing damage, so I think I lost, like, four or five seconds because of that, but it didn't really matter at the end. Apart from that, I think it was a pretty clean race. Uh, like, I did have a couple of people bumping me from behind, but luckily no damage. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for Uh joining us. Absolutely great job finishing on the podium. Hopefully, we'll see you up again here next week. And now on to Will Ands. Now, Will, you and I were talking in the party yesterday before the F2 race, and I said when you are consistent, there is a very solid chance that you will finish on podium, and that's exactly what you have done today. So take me through your mindset going into this race, and then how do you you play it out through uh, the entirety of, well, this very interesting race, to say the least. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, it was a similar thing to, to AP7, I suppose. There was a big focus on my end from uh, from consistency. I knew Canada is probably my worst track on this calendar, so I knew uh, I'm not going to have the pace to win this or to get a podium on pace, so I just need to be consistent. Um, I didn't touch a single wall, uh, and I only got one wall in the whole race, so that was the aim, and I, I accomplished that, and uh, that got me the P2, I think. Very solid, so I'll ask you as well. Bahrain short next week. How do you feel? Are you excited? I mean, uh, it's it's kind of one of those tracks where anything can happen. Definitely fun track. Definitely, I mean, lap time's under a minute for sure. It's going to be a very fast, fun race. Uh, how much are you anticipating it? Um, uh, slight, slightly um, nervy going ahead of it. I've only had one league race there, and uh, I got lapped on lap one. So... Um... We'll see. Hopefully, I can do a much better job than that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Uh, Monkey, do you have anything to add? That's definitely key there. Uh, yeah. Bahrain short's tough to not get lapped on. Um, so was your focus at the beginning um, with the rain, you know, was were you worried to go onto the slicks, or did you even contemplate going to the, the intermediates to start that? It, it 
caught me out a little bit, to be honest. I saw the weather forecast before and thought, okay, we're going to be starting on intermediate tyres. So I had that in my head and I was ready for that. And then we loaded onto the grid and, and the team were saying that the, the softs were actually the better tyres to start on the slicks. So that's what everybody else did. It was a little bit nervy, just trying not to spin the wheels up, trying not to lock up and stuff. It worked uh, in the end, I think. Matt's pace, you were just, you, you had turbo in your ass or something, man. I don't know what, what you were doing, bro. But... Vote that guy to D1, right? Yeah, get him out of here, man. I want that P1. <laughs> you want a race, get out. I want to win. Uh, uh, well, thank you so much for joining us, Will Ants. Hopefully you have another good uh, run next week, and hopefully we get to see you again. I doubt that the reason Uncle Ben pitted on the last lap was because he hadn't run two compounds. Ooh, that is... So he didn't run two compounds and had to box. That's... That I did not expect. Yeah. However, I will okay. say that is, uh, I'm, I'm did I am glad he caught that before the end of the race and avoided the DNQ that he would have gotten. So uh, I guess he could uh, reactive there. I guess by him. Yeah. But anyway, so monkey, as you attempt to get Matt Rosie back into this party, what are your th uh, final thoughts on this race? Oh, there he goes. He's come back. Go ahead. Let's, I think Matt's in now. Wonder if he's having a mic problem then. Yep. He just messaged Mike's acting up. Ah, Give him a second. That, he's changing yeah, headset, so he's got a backup. So. Oh, okay. All right. We, he asked Jeff. So yeah, he, next. I can tell you he, that next week I'm really bummed. Um, that was Bahrain shorts of one race I was really looking forward to this season. Um, obviously we did it for that division battle, and I had a blast with it. I think it's. It's a fun track. You can definitely get lapped quick, but man, I'm bummed about that one. I think that's going to be some excitement. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and we were talking about. I think a lot of us uh, in the uh, a lot of us in the planning Discord were talking about adding, you know, short circuits uh, to the track for forever. And you know, there was a lot of question on, well, would that be such a good idea? You know, but then once Secure rolled around uh, in real life, and then we looked at the lap times and said, oh well, they're literally the same lap times we said okay yeah we could definitely add this um into real life and i'm glad we did because it's a very exciting track very fun to watch very uh very action-packed as well as we have seen already so i am very excited for that and very unfortunate that uh you won't be able to participate in that as i was very much looking forward you guys to hear me now uh, yes there he is oh okay Whew. sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's all good don't worry about it so all right third time's the charm so <laughs> Matt Rosie, going <laughs> off of what Will Anz was talking about, knowing that the beginning of the race was going to be in the wet, how much uh, how much did you take that into account uh, for your tire strategy and uh, the race in general? It was interesting because I actually contemplated for a second going on mediums until I tried to qualify on mediums until I saw it was supposed to be wet, and I said, okay, it's going to be on inters, no matter what happens on softs, because I mean, my qualifying pace in this track is super inconsistent. So I figured... Why not go on soft? It's going to be on inters no matter what, wherever you qualify. Turns out, obviously, that wasn't the case. And I actually did two laps on the softs that I started on, so I figured I'd be at a bit of a disadvantage. Ended up slapping a little more downforce on my car, and that actually helped a lot in the wet there. Well, I tell you what, yeah, a lot of the drivers that chose to fit the medium tires definitely did not have the start that they wanted. The majority of the people that started on the softs definitely had the better start, so absolute, so uh, great job there. But uh, yeah, again, Bahrain short next week, a track that uh, a lot of people have been anticipating. How do you feel? Uh, are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited. I mean, I've never really done a full league race there before. I'm just a little worried about how tight everything's going to be during qualifying and everything, being on such a short track, but... Should be interesting. Should be fun. Look forward to it. Yeah, and you know, you're not the first person to say that they don't have a lot of league experience <laughs> uh, on this track. Yeah, that's why AP7 said. I'm, I assume a lot of le other leagues don't normally run Bahrain short. That's one of. I think this is one of the only leagues that I've seen that uh, actually does that. So yeah, should be very exciting. Monkey, do you have anything to add? Oh, uh, not really. It's you know, pretty dominant performance for you there. You know. It's... Well, I mean, what else can you ask? Was it fun to drive around and not see anybody? <laughs> uh, I was I was on edge the whole time just because, you know, how any kind of track, any circuit where they have uh, walls around you, one little slip, you lose a wing, and then there goes the race. So 
I was kind of walking on eggshells the whole way. Not as relaxed as I would be normally. Oh, we'll get yeah, ready because we got Monaco thing. at week three. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure it'll be a good fight the rest of the year. I, uh, I don't think it'll be that easy from now on. Uh, especially taken from what uh, we saw in Austria in the preseason testing. Yeah, that, that exhibition race was exciting to watch. Um, you know, I raced in it, but to watch it back was a blast. There were such good battles. and Oh, yeah. And that's, that's what I expect thing, the season to be. The one thing that uh, Hotspot and I have talked about is we could easily see 12 different winners this season. Um, there's there's plenty of guys that can win the race. So I think it's going to be an exciting race, and you got your win out of the way early. So just keep up with it. 100%. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us, Monkey. Any final thoughts before we sign off here? It's been one heck of a race, and hopefully uh, the prelude to a very, very exciting season here. Hopefully one of the better uh, you know, seasons we've had uh, in the Midwest F1 League across all the divisions. I'm very excited personally. What about you? Yeah, definitely. You know, We've had the discussions about it. Um, uh, on one hand, I'm excited. On the other hand, I'm, I'm mad because I can't be part of it. Mm. Um, you know, that was... I, the build up to this season has been great and then three days before the season starts I'm out and can't race for six weeks so that's a, definitely a tough one but you know it's great to join you in the booth and, and be a part of it somehow yeah well I, I mean obviously it's gonna it's gonna stink seeing you uh, in the booth here not because not because I don't want to have you here but obviously I'd rather see you out on the track as you were definitely in, in the uh, preseason race you were definitely uh, a very exciting talent to watch so hopefully we get more of that in the later end of the season but for all of us here at the uh, in the Midwest in the <laughs> Midwest F1 league I'm already messing up the intro for, for all of us here at the Midwest F1 league I'm hotspot and I was joined by monkey Mafia see you all next week at Bahrain short for week two of division two.